come from this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Calvary, let's sing it all in one voice. Come on, sing. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come fly this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God. Glory, God, is what our hearts long to be.
you are immortal you are invisible god our creator you are almighty you are omnipotent you are omniscient you are ever present so we welcome you we gather this morning as your children in the most gracious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, we welcome you, O oh God, to abide in our midst and please help us to worship you and worship you in spirit and in truth. To you be the praise, glory and honor throughout this service. Let your name be lifted. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says... Hallelujah! Amen and amen. You are welcome in the presence of the Lord. Please turn to your neighbor and welcome them in the presence of the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome with a smile. Welcome. We also welcome our audience, the online audience. We welcome you. Thank you so much for choosing to be a part of this morning prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends, the Lord has loved us so much and he has given us an opportunity to see a new day. So we do not take that for granted. Bishop, you're welcome. Yes, a big, big hand of praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. We have come together, my sisters and brothers, in the presence of our good God to worship him, to pray to him, and indeed to present to him the needs of this world. But we cannot say that we have no sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are liars and the truth is not in us. So take a minute, reflect upon your life where you have fallen short of God's glory and ask him to have mercy. Our friends online, please do the same. Reflect upon your life and ask God to have mercy upon you. Amen and amen, amen. Together we shall join in the general prayer of confession. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow man in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life to the glory of your name. May we receive the Lord's forgiveness. May the Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall join in the collect of the day, the fourth Sunday after Easter. Almighty God, who alone can order the unruly will and affections of sinful men, grant unto your people that they may love the thing which you command and desire that which you do promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, O oh Lord, open our lips. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forevermore. Amen. Praise. Ask your neighbor to give you some space because you're going to dance before Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's receive our Bethel Judah as they lead us in the presence of the Lord. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit with a hand of praise. We thank God for you this morning. It is so beautiful to see all of us. Thank you for honoring God by coming to church. Just think about what God has been to you, even the promises he has made to you, even those difficult times that God is taking you through, and just give him praise. Today we are going to praise our way out of our situations, because when we praise him, his presence comes down. Hallelujah. Do you, do you believe that when you praise the Lord, the presence 
comes down. So just praise him with all your might, with all your strength. He's a mighty God. He's the great I am. Amen.
Father, it's our desire this morning that we receive our worship, our thanksgiving, our praise. You're the reason we dance. You're the reason we celebrate this way. Even more than we could ever bring to you. Thank you, Jesus, for you. Thank you for being God in our lives. Thank you for everything that has worked in our favor. And thank you even for those situations that are difficult. We bless you because you promised that you never leave us alone. And so we will worship you every day of our lives. Whether it makes sense or not, we will choose to give you praise because our redemption, our salvation comes from you, our God.
Yes, Lord. I invite all of us to take some time to present a request before the Lord. As we come, we all have personal needs and let's bring them before the Lord. Just take a moment and present that one thing to the Lord. It's not about your neighbor, it's not about someone, it's not about who is looking at you, but it's about you and God. You present to your Father who is in heaven. And whatever you present to him, be sure that he will give it to you and you'll receive it. So friends, I invite all of us to pray. We've not just come to look at what is happening, but we've come to connect with the Lord. Take this time and tell him what you want him to do for you. Maybe you're not feeling well. Maybe there's something that is bothering you. Just surrender to the Lord. Surrender that burden to the Lord. For he has said in his word, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. There is no rest in this world, there is only rest in the Lord. You can only be safe in the Lord, so present your case to the Lord. I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord understands. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about your family. He knows everything about you, the details about your work, about your job. He is aware of what you're going through. Just lift your voice to the Lord and say, I love you. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, we worship you, we adore you, for you are great. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. As we come before you this morning, Lord, we come with personal needs, oh God. Lord, we surrender them to you. And Lord, all of us belong to our family. We want to lift our families before you this morning, King of glory. Lord, may you reign in our families. May you reign in our hearts, oh God. Let there be unity um, uh, in our families, oh God. We surrender our children to you, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us children, oh God. We know that they are gifts from you. We surrender them to you, King of glory. We thank you for sustaining our children, oh God, the time they've been away in schools, oh God. Lord, that you've brought them safely back home, Lord, we say thank you to you. And there are some people who could not finish the term. Some of them lost their lives, oh God. We remember such families, oh God. And Lord, we are grateful to you for your protection. And we continue to surrender them to you, O oh God. May you continue to protect our children, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for this chapel, O oh God. We thank you for the Christians, O oh God. Lord, we lift them before you. May you bless this, your children, O oh God, who are gathered here. Even those who are following online, Lord, may you bless them. May you answer them, O oh God, wherever they are, King of glory. And for those who are not feeling well, Lord, may you stretch your healing hands upon them. May they receive your healing this morning in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We declare healing, O oh God. This morning, I don't know what you're going through. Just mention that pain. May the Lord answer your prayer. May the Lord touch you and deliver you this morning, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the leadership. We thank you for the chaplain. Lord, may you bless her. May you give her wisdom to lead your people in this great chapel, O oh God. We thank you for the, the, the council members. We thank you for the council meeting, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for, for our people's word and king of glory. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon, the all, upon all the council members. Lord, may you bless them. Bless their families. Bless this, your children, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this university. May you bless this university. May you bless the leadership, O oh God. We thank you for the chancellor. We thank you for the VC, O oh God. All the teaching staff, the non-teaching staff, the students, Lord, we lift them before you. May you bless them, King of glory. And maybe, maybe there's someone in this place who is waiting upon you to join this great university. Lord, may you make a way. Maybe there's there's someone waiting upon you. Someone is struggling out there with you. So, Lord, may you make a way, King of glory. 
We thank you for this beautiful country, Lord. We are proud to be known as Ugandans, oh God. This is the pearl of Africa, the beautiful country, Lord. We surrender this country to you, King of glory. May your peace reign in this country. Lord, may you continue to uphold this country, for this is your country. We are your people, Lord. May you continue to fight, oh God, our battles in many ways. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Even as we prepare to listen to your word, Heavenly Father, may you open our hearts to receive from you, O oh God. We thank you for the preacher man, King of glory. We pray for special anointing upon his life. Thank you for the worship team. Lord, bless them. All the ministers, we bless your name. May you bless all of us as we continue to sit at your feet. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, as we open our eyes, look at your neighbor as we join in the word of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. A big hand clap to the Lord. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Bethel Judah, for leading us. You may all be seated. Let's now have the minister of the word. God bless you. Praise God, brethren. Our reading today is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 30, sorry, chapter 35, verse 30, to chapter 36, verse 1. Exodus, chapter 35, reading from verse 30 to chapter 36, verse 1. It reads, And Moses said to the people of Israel, See, the Lord has called by the name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability, with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting and in carving wood, for work in every skilled craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Oholiab, the son of Ahismach of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with the ability to do every sort of work done by a craftsman or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet stuff and fine twinned linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Bezalel and Holiab and every able man in whom the Lord has put ability and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all, the, with all that the Lord has commanded. Brethren, receive the word of God. Thank you very much. Once again, you're very welcome. We continue to welcome you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, may I now take this opportunity to invite our dear chaplain. Let's welcome our dear chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Lydia. Let's, let's appreciate Reverend Siko for leading us so well. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Scovia. In a special, let's welcome all our reverends who are with us. Yes, please, Reverend Musa, you're welcome. Reverend Eruk, you're welcome. And my coolest dude, Reverend Professor. <laughs> praise the Lord. Good morning, dear friends. And praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Wow. You are welcome. We believe that all our friends also online are participating with us and responding like we are responding. I know this 
Nine o'clock, it is streamed, so we have an online audience. I will not do the notices, but I just wanted to come and welcome all those who are here for the first time. If you are fellowshipping with us for the first time, just put up your hand so we can welcome you. The St. Francis can we? You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you, bless you, and bless you indeed. Let's appreciate our choir, Bethel Judah, for the great job that they've done. God bless you. I'm going to ask us to stand up, and together we shall boldly confess what we believe in uh, through the words of the Nicene Creed. No, the Apostles' Creed. Apostles' Creed. I will also ask our friends who are online, please let's remind ourselves that creed, what we believe in, and thereafter I'll hand over the microphone. Together you can please project, I believe Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, For, and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, he descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we please sit down? Yes, it's important that we remind ourselves what we believe in so we are not confused when we go out. Praise the Lord. We are privileged this morning to have a man of God. Like the young people love to say. You know, for us who are always a man of God, but the young people, man of God. Hallelujah. Great. And this man is gifted, is anointed of the Lord, and that's none other than Mr. Samuel Bakutana, the Provincial <laughs> Fathers Union President. He will be coming to bring God's word to us. Praise the Lord. But before he comes, I will invite the drama team to come and yes our friends online please just enjoy allow the presence of god to come into your room or your car wherever you're tuning in from let the lord touch you and may god bless you amen Sorry, sorry. We are doing our best. You're going to be better. We are working. Oh, oh God, it's all right. Oh, oh. oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. And this pressure. We're working, we're working on it. Let me see. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, okay. so let's... Good morning, nurse. Morning, doctor. Uh, this is patient number... Nine. Number nine. Yes. Uh, what, what are the signs that uh, she's portraying out? Oh, I'm seeing... Uh, Things are not well. Did you run a PRSV uh, test on her? Yes, doctor. Okay, uh, so uh, where are the results? Uh, I had taken them to the lab. Okay, run and pick them and then we check on uh, Kate. Okay, doctor. Oh, so again. That was so fast. The lab guy is not around, doctor. I told you this man is unserious. This is an emergency. Why is he not around? Like, what's the time? Like, this guy is supposed to be here at this time. 
No, 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 no. I have to run this. This is my self. You bring it. I have to run. No, this is an emergency. I have to save a life. Doctor, this is not your specialty. I have experience. I have been in a medical fraternity for 25 years. I don't know what you people study these days. Okay, let's, let me just, I have his number. Let me just call no, 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 him. No, no, let no, me no. just call him. No, 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 no. You know, I have been in a medical fraternity for so long. We studied on practical basis. For you guys are studying on WhatsApp. You are the medical guys who graduated online. Yes, doctor, but it is not in you. No, no, I no, don't no, no. know whether you this can manage it. This is an emergency. It. Please attend to her as I finish up. Oh, my God. Uh, I need to get I need to get call more doctors. This is not this is not well. This is not fine. Eh. <laughs> eh, eh, what's happening? What's happening here? Oh, so so the doctor, doctor, uh, 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 um, doctor. Doctor, me, let me give you what I find here. I think what, what can I surely do? You also don't die. Please, please, please. please. You, you're getting better. Let me add you more this side. You, you, you're getting better. Please, please, just, uh, uh, just take, just take, just, 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 just take. Doctor, s someone needs help here. Someone, s s someone needs need his help here. You'll get okay. you get okay. Doctor, I, I, yeah, yes. We, we, what is going on? I, I, I found this lady. No one is attending to her. And she's dying, you can see. So I gave her... Bruce, um, your workstation is in the laboratory. But she was dying. What, what did then, you want me to do? What did you oh, give her? I gave her... Oh my God, Bruce, you give, you give me vaccine to, is she diabetic? Bruce, you shouldn't have done this. Your work is supposed to be in the lab. Do you know what I, you can do to her? I do you know this is someone's daughter? No one was Do you know this is not somewhere you're supposed to be working? <laughs> no one was attending. Bruce, her life is at stake just because you're careless. The doctor good morning. is, is good, good morning. There is a sound. Dr. Joseph, what time is this? Oh, it is eight hours uh, in the lab. In the what? I was in the lab running mm -hmm. the test samples for patients number nine. Do you know what has just happened? Is your work supposed to be in the lab? But I was working. Do in you the know lab. that they have just injected her with Nexorona? Nexorona was for patients number 17. Exactly in what I'm talking about! I was Exactly, just... and you're still talking, you're, sh you're fired. But doctor, the, the person was dying. I just gave... Next corona for... I She's just... actually dead. Uh, um... Out of my... Just don't say anything. Get out. Do, do, doctor, I... Get out! I, I just gave her what I found. What kind of carelessness is this? For God's sake, this is unserious. You're looking and laughing and smiling. Each one of them knew why they were hired. <laughs> God created That's you with a gift he gave you for a reason. If we all put them together very well, we will develop his kingdom. God bless you. Let me also just give you whatever I find now. <laughs> so pray hard to be safe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's appreciate these wonderful men and women. You're safe. I won't just give you whatever I find. I'm here to give you what the Lord has given you to bring to you this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, you are very welcome to this parliament this morning, all of you honorable members. 
Kingdom Parliament. So I want to put the motion to you. The motion says, everyone has ever received a gift. Those in favor say aye. To the contrary, say nay. The eyes have it. Everyone has ever received a gift. I put you the second motion. I put it to question. Everyone has ever given a gift. Those in favor say aye. To the contrary, say nay. The nays have it. Not everybody has ever given a gift. But all of us have received the gift. Almighty Lord, we thank you for this morning. You who is the giver of precious gifts, we praise your name. Your word tells us in James that indeed every good and perfect gift comes from you. James chapter 1 verse 17. That every good and perfect gift comes from you, from the Father of lights in whom there is no shadow of turning. Thank you for all the gifts that you have given to us. We know that being alive this morning is a gift. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the gift of work. Thank you for the gift of marriage and family. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for every gift. We know that whatever we have, physical or spiritual, visible or unseen, is a gift from you. And whatever we do with it is our gift back to you. So Lord, we pray that this morning, Heavenly Master, you will enable us to preserve the gift of life. You will enable us to accept the gift of salvation. You will enable us to cultivate the gift of work. You will enable us to build holy relationships. You will enable us to use heavenly wisdom for earthly kingdom influence as a gift back to you. Take over this place right now and speak to each one of us, both those who are here physically and those online right now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you love him. <laughs> give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. People up there, give God the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bethel Judah, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hmm. My name is Samuel Bakutana, just like our dear chaplain has said. I am born again by the grace of God. Put my faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got born again in 1999 in November around my birthday. And then they, they changed me from the school I was in and took me to another school whose name you could not easily pronounce without biting your tongue. So I became very angry at God and I left salvation for some years. Then I came back to the Lord on the 18th of October 2003, precisely about 20 years ago at 10.30 p.m. in the middle of a football pitch in some school. And ever since then, the Lord has been with me and I thank him for that gift of salvation. I am married to my beautiful wife that majority of you have seen before, right here. Miss Universe, the queen of my heart, honorable charity, my watermelon. Yeah. Singles don't mind. It's just a matter of time, right? <laughs> It's just a matter of time, so don't mind. <laughs> Especially this one seated here. <laughs> you know that every time I come here, I usually come with her. We love to minister together. But today she's not around. But there is nothing wrong. We didn't fight. Today at St. John's Church of Uganda, where we pray from our local church, it is Mary's Day. And she is the vice chairperson of the Mother's Union. So she's been at the center of the preparations. Right now they are busy ministering and leading the church in thanksgiving. And so we agreed that I should come here. And she leads the ministry that side. So we are all busy ministering wherever we are by God's grace. And immediately after here I will be transitioning to again go and stand with her. And stand with the wonderful mothers there. We thank God. We have two children, a boy and a girl. The boy is Prosper, the girl is Petra. And they also sent their greetings this morning as I was leaving the house. They know that I am here 
and I'm not among those preachers who claim that their family sent greetings when they didn't. So please receive their greetings. They sent them to you. <laughs> they actually really wanted to be here. My children so much love your children's church as St. Francis. So every time they know that we are coming to St. Francis, they are the happiest. So they missed coming here today. I lead the Ministry of Fathers Union in the Diocese of Kampala as the Diocesan Fathers Union President by the grace of God. But also ever since last year, on 8th of June, I was elected by the different presidents around the country to be the first provincial Fathers Union President. So I lead the Ministry of Fathers Union across the country by the grace of God. <clears throat> Professionally, I'm a certified executive coach I'm an award-winning leadership consultant. I'm a global speaker. I'm an author. My 17th book came out two weeks ago, Blossom in Your Job and Business. Blossom in Your Job <laughs> and Business. How to activate the four divine secrets of prosperity in employment and entrepreneurship. I would like to congratulate you, St. Francis Chapel, for producing the Bishop of North Kigezi Diocese. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> we had a glorious time at Chinyasano Hill just a few months ago as we attended the consecration and enthronement of our friend, our brother, our minister, our uncle O, who is now Bishop O, I presume, maybe. <laughs> it was quite a glorious time, so we thank God. May this chapel continue to produce transformational leaders in all the spheres of influence. May this chapel produce transformational leaders in religion and faith. May this chapel produce transformational leaders in business and economy. Say amen. May this chapel uh, produce transformational leaders in the sector of, of education. May this chapel produce transformational leaders in the institution of the family. Great men, great fathers from this church. May this family of St. Francis Chapel produce great transformational leaders in the sphere of politics and governance in the sphere of the media. May this place produce transformational leaders for the sphere of celebration in arts, culture, sports, entertainment. May that be your inheritance that people who come in this place will go out there and be great leaders all over the world in Jesus' name. <laughs> Receive it if you believe it in the name of Jesus. What a joy to be here talking about gifted and graced to equip the church. Gifted and graced to equip the church. That's our topic today. Say it with me. Gifted and graced to equip the church. Turn to the neighbor and say, you are gifted. You have the grace to be a blessing to the body of Christ. And tell them and say, but you are not alone. Even me here that you see. So you're lucky to be seated next to me. <laughs> Do you know that we are also extremely lucky to have this lady as our chaplain in this season? <laughs> when I say you are lucky to be seated next to me, just know that we are also lucky to have us being seated next to us here as our new chaplain. I am so glad that you were brought to this market here. Reverend Dr. Lydia Chitaimba, blessed be the name of the Lord. I have known her for a few years, but the few years I have known her, I know her as a, a woman of prayer. I know her as a servant leader, somebody who serves without making noise about it. You know, some people... <laughs> We have some people who are like cattle. You know a cow, for some of you who are from the cattle places, you know a cow will give you very many liters of milk and it doesn't make noise about it. But a hen lay one egg like this. There are many people who are like that even in the ministry. They just lay one egg and make noise about it. She is like that wonderful cow that produces a lot of milk and she makes no noise about it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I've known Lydia as a preacher of the word, uncompromising preacher of the truth. 
you know, a lady of class. Hallelujah. Yeah, oh yeah. Who told you when you are born again, you should look to whom it may concern? No way. <laughs> no, recently I was watching a small video clip that was making rounds on social media, WhatsApp particularly, and TikTok. This woman was saying, hey, so for you, you thought that because we are born again, we will now look bad, we are going to look good, we are going to put on nice clothes, we are going to drive big cars, we will go to the hotels you go to, we will eat powerful food, and we will even go to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. So I've known my sister as a lady of class, a 21st century minister to all of us, our digital mama, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May your ministry indeed be very fruitful and productive on this hill. May the Lord use you as his battle axe for his battles. May he use you to win them all in the name of Jesus Christ. Just watch his hand use you to give you victory on this hill. Hallelujah. May whoever stands in front of you to stand against you realize that there is a God who fights for his ministers. <laughs> Gifted and graced to equip the church. God's grace has come to all of us. God's gifts have come to all of us. All of us means all of us. That's the good news. All of us doesn't mean most of us. No. All of us means all of us, including those who are seated up there. They look closer to God up there. Grace has come to you too, my brother, my sister. God has gifted you too. And today he wants to tell you what to do with those gifts. People who are online, you have gifts. And I want to believe that God gives us the grace through the different gifts, talents, and skills that we have. You know, those three words I've just said, some people think they are the same. Just like in the world where I spend most of my time, people confuse some words. They think they are the same. They use them concurrently. Words like consultant, coach, mentor, trainer, counselor. They just interchange them as if they mean the same thing. <laughs> same thing like in Proverbs 2, 6, which says, the Lord gives wisdom and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. We confuse those three words as if they are the same. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Similarly, gifts, skills, and talents, sometimes we, we make them sound like they are the same, but they are different. When you talk about a skill, you are talking about a learned ability, an ability you have learned, you have acquired it through practice, through training. When you talk about a talent, it is an inborn ability. You were born with it. You didn't acquire it. When you talk about a gift, especially in the context of today's message, you are talking about a spiritually imparted ability. God imparts the gift into you. If I could give myself as an example on this, when it comes to the area of my talents, I have some talents in music, for example. I have some talents in writing. I have some talents in encouragement, encouraging people. I have some talents in writing people, mobilizing masses. I have some talents in conversations with strangers. I don't struggle to start a conversation with a stranger. Whether it's in an elevator or it's wherever, outside in a compound, just meet a stranger, say, hi, how are you? Oh, nice shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we would start, say, oh, thank you. Yeah, my name is Samuel. How about you? Lillian. Lillian, okay. How are you, Lillian? Good to meet you. Precisely, who is Lillian, in case you don't mind? <laughs> you see, <laughs> Now we start the conversation. So I, I am quite talented at that. I, I easily, you know, mix and mingle. It's an inborn ability. Now, when it comes to my skills, I have skills in training. I have skills in creative writing. I have skills in mobilization, in editing, professional editing and proofreading of documents. I have skills in executive coaching, in professional speaking, skills in program design and implementation, skills even in volleyball. Don't dare to be on the other side when I'm this side and we are playing volleyball because you may leave that court without your head because of my hot spike. Once I jump and I give you one, 
you will know that there is a, <laughs> that this is a father's union member. <laughs> Skills. Now, those are abilities I have acquired, right? Yes, I was not born with them. I sharpened them. When it comes to the area of my spiritual gifts, I would mention five of them in the order. My spiritual gift number one is teaching. My spiritual gift number two is leadership. Uh, my spiritual gift number three is knowledge, the gift of knowledge. Number four is administration, and number five is the gift of giving in that order. <laughs> Yeah, I'm being honest with us. <laughs> Those are my spiritual gifts in that order because they are tools that can help you to know that. I put a whole spiritual gift survey in this book that came out last year, Ability to Produce Wealth, a practical roadmap to your financial confidence, peace of mind, and a life of beautiful options. There are some 10 pages that help you to discover your spiritual gifts and know which one comes first, where you flow best, and so on and so forth. So you can know. How about you ask your neighbor for you, do you know your talents, skills, and gifts? Ask. Do you really know yourself? Do you know yourself? Or you're waiting for a voice to come through the ventilator and say, your gift is... No! <laughs> Things don't happen that way. You have to go on a search. You have to go on a search on an intentional effort to ensure that you discover who you are and what God has given you. And as you use those different gifts to bless many other people, you will also be blessed and lifted up. We are lifted up when we are exercising the gifts that God has graced us with to equip his church. Praise the Lord. You attract your blessings by being a blessing to others. You multiply your grace upon your life by being graceful and gracious to others. That's why... King Solomon of Israel, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, he said, A man's gift creates room for him and sits him among the great. Proverbs 18, 16. That it's a man's gift. Not per se a man's degree, a man's PhD, a man's car, a man's money, a man's wife. However beautiful your wife is like mine, a, man's, a, a woman's husband creates room. No, 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 not so much really. Even if you are TDH like me, my wife calls me TDH, tall, dark, and handsome. I know the better about it. Even if you are whatever it is, what creates room for you are not those things, but the gift upon your life. The gift that God has given you is the seed for your prosperity, is the seed for your progress, is the seed for your impact in the kingdom. Gifts. We've been graced and gifted that we may be able to equip the church. So if we are to equip the body of Christ and be useful, we need to do three things to the gifts God has given to us. Let me talk about the three things and I sit down. Tell your neighbor, get your notebook ready. <laughs> Number one, you need to discover your gifts. Discover them. An unknown gift cannot be used. If you haven't known the gift God has put upon your life, it is highly likely that you won't utilize it. How many of you here have ever received a gift? You know, even wrapped very well, just like me, I've ever received some gifts. Raise your hand if you've ever received a gift, wrapped up and delivered to you. All right, almost all of us. Now let me ask, when you received that gift, did you put it in a corner somewhere, maybe on top of a table, and say, hmm, nice wrapping paper, shining so bright. Oh, I even love the color of this wrapping paper. So I'm going to put this box here. Every morning I have to look at this nice wrapping paper, enjoy it. Oh my, this wrapping paper is awesome. Is that what you did? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Clearly, this is not a question. I am asking an answer. I'm not asking a question. 
Because the answer is clear. You opened it. Did you open it after two weeks? <laughs> you opened When did you open it? Immediately. Why? Because a gift is not supposed to be kept wrapped. A gift is not supposed to be unknown. A gift is supposed to be unwrapped. And you see what is in there and you know how to use it and what to do with it, right? Yes. But you know how most of us are focusing on the wrapping paper. Hallelujah. My hair. And you are busy typewriting in the air as you talk about your hair. Akaviri. Eh? <laughs> uh, my hair, you're talking about your, your, your earring, your cheek ring, nose ring, everything ring everywhere. Oh, your suit, your tie. You're looking at the wrapping paper. What is inside? You need to discover your gifts. You need to discover your gifts. Because when you discover these gifts, they become the tools that God will use to make you impactful and useful. Let me tell you something. Do you know that you can be coming to church every Sunday? You are even a member of a choir, a member of a certain committee. You are in a mother's union. You are in a father's union. You are a member of the committee for the youth. But you are not yet so much useful to the kingdom per se. Do you know that, okay, you can be quite helpful in a church, but you are useless to your neighbor where you stay? Right? God gives us the gifts we have so that we can be people of use to people around us. It is possible for you to be rich and unprofitable to that neighbor. It is possible for you to be gifted, but you are a social nuisance in the community. It is possible for you to be more talented, but you are also more burdensome to those around you. It is possible for you to be both born again and useless in the kingdom. Because being born again is about accepting Jesus Christ. Being useful in the kingdom is getting the gifts he gave you and you use them for his purposes. So you can even be born again and you even go to heaven and you inherit the kingdom and you go to heaven, but on earth you were not really influential, impactful, and useful. Discovering your gift. These are facts. We just have to be at peace with them. A few minutes ago, we read from Exodus chapter 30, 35. Yes, 35. There was this gentleman called Bezalel. I was amazed at the gifts God had given him. When you read from verse 2, it says, I, God said, I have chosen a man from the tribe of Judah to do some special work for me. His name is Bezalel. In that one verse, I see three key things. Number one, God chooses you. He said, I have chosen a man for myself. So God chooses you. God chooses you. And then secondly, he gives you a special assignment. He said, I have given him work to do. Each one of us has been chosen and given an assignment. And then he goes on and says, and his name is Bezalel. He calls you in a name to remove all doubt. Let me tell you, you, you may have been forgotten the other time during the interview or the other time when they were giving, I don't know what, but in heaven, your name is clear, written, known. You are remembered. Yes. You are remembered. And the next time you want to clap, you clap, okay? Hey. Don't, don't threaten to clap. So God chooses you. That's number one. Number two, he gives you a special assignment and he calls you in name to make, to make it clear that it is you he's talking about. When you go on and read verse three, verse four, verse five, and verse six, the details of the gifting comes in. He says... I have filled Bezalel with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in the cutting of stones for setting, in carving wood, to work in every craft. Oh my, the man had a plethora of gifts. And I can assure you, just like he did, you also have a plethora of gifts. Romans chapter 12 from verse 3 to verse 8 gives us the list of those gifts of grace that God has given to each one of us. And verse 3 gives a powerful introduction to those gifts. It says, For by the grace given to me, I ask every one of you 
not to think of yourself more highly than you should think. Instead, think of yourself with sober judgment on the measure of faith that God has assigned each of you. So already he is telling us <laughs> not, to, eh, not to be like the other hen that lays one egg and makes noise. He's saying don't think so highly of yourself. Keep yourself within the right estimate. <laughs> don't overestimate yourself just because of the gift upon your life. It is a gift of grace. So he is in essence saying what I am about to tell you because going down from verse 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, he now gives a list of the different gifts. So he is setting a preamble that what I'm about to tell you, those gifts, there is no single gift that is superior, that is more important than the other. For example, the gift of prophecy in verse 6 is not greater than the gift of service in verse 7. The gift of teaching in verse 7 is not greater than the gift of encouragement in verse 8. The gift of generosity in verse 8 is not greater than the gift of leadership in the same verse. The gift of henneping in verse 9 is not greater than any other gift. All of them are needed. The gift of intercession. Intercessors are not greater than preachers because they speak in tongues. Worship leaders are not greater than compound cleaners. No. As long as each one of them is playing their role well, not like some of these doctors we saw here, then there is safety in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So you need to discover your own gift. Praise the Lord. Number two, which is second last, you need to develop your gifts. So number one, discover, but number two, don't keep your gift a raw material. Many of us are seated on wonderful raw materials called gifts that are not developed. What God gave you is his gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to him. You better do something with it. Develop your gifts once you've discovered them. We read about the parable of the talents. In Matthew 25, from verse 15, we realize that to one man, he gave five talents. To another one, how many? Two. And then to another one? And then the Bible says, according to what? According to? According to their ability. Let me tell you what you have is because of your ability. What you have in your pocket right now is as a result of your current ability. <laughs> Hello? God is so gracious, so good and so loving that he won't give you much more than you can handle. <laughs> Some of you are here praying big prayers. Thank you, go ahead. They are not harmful. Pray those prayers. But if God answered some of your prayers, they would turn into a burden to you. Because you don't have the capacity to handle if that answer was given to you. That he gave to each one of them according to their ability. According to your ability. So you realize the revelation here is that your ability dictates your prosperity. God will give you only what you can handle. So if you, are to, if you are to handle more, then you need to develop your capacity. Expand your ability by developing your gifts. Make sense? Develop your gifts. Praise the Lord. One thing that made me quite sad was what I saw this, this man doing. The one who had only one gift. <laughs> one talent. He went and he did. Dug a grave. Let me even call it a grave. Dug a grave and kept it there in the grave. <laughs> then brought it back to the master. And then he started to say words that if you don't have emotional intelligence as a master, you would have slapped him immediately. He said, hey, my master, I knew you. You are a terrible man. You always harvest where you have not planted. And so when you gave me that talent, that gift, I knew you. I went and hid it. Kept it safe. Here it is. Take your thing. <laughs> Do you see how failure to develop our talents and gifts can even 
change our mindset towards God? God has given you gifts, but maybe because you are comparing yourself with the Bishop Sewihinja, because you are comparing yourself with Mr. Frank Katsime, because you are comparing yourself with Robbie, because you are comparing yourself with Gabby, because you are comparing yourself, hey, then you start to say, for me, God did not give me enough. So you have a bad attitude even towards God, not just your boss at work. Recently, we were having a conversation and somebody was quoting, you know, that scripture when Paul was writing to Timothy, chapter 6, verse 10, and said, uh, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And he said, you know, wealth, as you can see, it can cause you problems. You know, being rich can take you to hell. <laughs> but I said, yeah, by the way, you're right, only that you have not completed the story. Let me complete it for you. Also, being poor is a big problem. You can so easily go to hell because you will be forced to steal sometimes. You will tell lies to get money. Daddy, they have said that we take money for photosynthesis to the university because you see, you, your father stopped at P1. You are fighting hard to get money also. So those two extremes are dangerous. So in this portion of scripture, Jesus is telling this parable to remind us that if we are to be safe in serving him, we better develop our gifts that he has given us. Because they are the seed for our movement forward when we are serving. Develop your gift. Develop it through training. Develop it through exposure. Develop it in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah. Then you can have the right image of God, not like that man in verse 24. Then you can resolve not to go back to your creator with raw, unused gifts, like it is in verse 25. Then you can refuse any type of wickedness. Do you realize that this man was called wicked? That tells you that wickedness is not only when you tell a lie. Wickedness is not only when you fornicate in that uh, hostel where you, you reside. Hey, you are importing, 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 and I'm not going. Hmm? <laughs> wickedness is not only when you, you become drunk and make a, you know, a spectacle out of yourself. But also getting seated on God's gifts in your life and you don't develop them and use them, it is called wickedness. That's what the Bible has said. That man did not tell a lie. That man did not commit adultery. The only thing he did was to get the gift God gave to him and keep it and he did not use it. And he was called a wicked servant. How many wicked people are seated here? For more details of how you can really cultivate your gifts, then you know what to do after this service at the tent. Lastly, number three, deploy your gifts. So number one was? Discover them. Number two? And now number three? Deploy. Put God's gifts upon your life to use. Did you know that God doesn't give us money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could be somebody now disturbed about what I've just said. <laughs> He's busy saying, what? So did I waste my time in the, in the other overnight? I spent the whole night saying, God, money, 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 money. That was my only prayer the whole night. <laughs> According to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, God gives us not the money, but the ability. The ability to produce wealth. The ability is what God has given you. Yes. So you can make those things for yourself. Yeah, let him deal with other things. He has Ukraine and Russia to deal with. <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for this kind of thing. <laughs> but you get my point. He gives you the ability to produce it. So what God gives you is the gift, the grace, the ability. Right? In fact, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 talks about the gifts that he has given to us. That they come to him. I mean they come from him to us. Verse 11 says, 
Ephesians 4. It is he who gifted some to be apostles, others prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then verse 11, that the reason for these gifts is to equip the church, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So our gifts should be put to use to equip others, to empower people around us, to build the kingdom. So you realize the gift that God gave you is not yours. You are not the owner. You are only a steward, a caretaker. You look after it for the ministry of others. Who believes that they have a nice smile like mine? If you know you, you believe you have a nice smile, put your hand up. Then I tell you something. If you believe you have a nice smile, put your hand up. Oh, only two people up there. Oh, there are many now. All right. All right. Great. Hmm. Somebody put up their hand. Neighbor, please turn to them and see whether it's true. <laughs> now, friends who put up their hands with me, let me ask you a question. Whenever you smile, like now you've smiled, right? Whenever you smile, do you see your smile? Why? Because that smile is not yours. It is only on you, but it is ours. That's why, regardless of the problems you go through, keep smiling. Your smile is a ministry. You don't smile only when you are happy. Sometimes you are sad, but you smile to minister to somebody. And when you minister to them with your smile and minister your problems, and they smile back, now that one becomes yours and it ministers to you. That's how God created us to be complementary. The gifts God gave you are not yours. Okay, if you have a gift of teaching like me, do you teach yourself, really? Does a river drink its water? <laughs> Does a mango tree eat its fruits? There is a way, this is a law of nature in the kingdom that each one of us was created and everything else was created for something else or for someone else. So these gifts God gave us should be used to bless others, not to brag about them. We are gifted and graced to equip other people in the church and beyond. We are gifted to be a gift to God's people. Hallelujah. We are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others and not a burden. Hallelujah. As a fellow husband in this in this church right now, I want to remind you graciously that you have the grace to be a husband, a husband, a husband, not a hammer to your wife. You have the grace. The grace is there. As a wife, you have the grace to be a wife, not a knife to your husband. That grace is there. You were created to be a blessing, brother, to be a blessing to others. You have the grace. It's there. You are blessed so as to bless. So tell your neighbor, your gifts are to serve me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> your gifts are to serve me. But let me request you to tell him or her something else, which I'm not sure you will like, but you just have to obey the preacher this morning. So also tell your neighbor and say, and my gifts are yours. To serve you. I know we love the first one and not exactly the second one, but we just have to learn these things. <laughs> Our gifts are to serve other people. So that is why in Romans, the Bible says, you know, from verse 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of chapter 12 that we talked about, that if your gift is prophecy, prophesy in proportion to your faith. In other words, do it with the best of your ability. That if your gift is serving others, devote yourself to serving them. That if your gift is teaching, teach very diligently with painstaking excellency. That if your gift is encouragement, encourage people like a dying man who is dying today and is encouraging people who are dying today. He wants them to go to heaven with encouragement. You know when you know that this is the last time you're talking to a group, and you may never see them again and you are serious about what you are talking to them, you can talk your lungs dry. Do it to the best of your ability. 
that if your gift is sharing, be generous. But not unwise. If your gift is leadership, lead transformationally and enthusiastically. Be a leader, not a dealer. If your gift is helping, help other people cheerfully. So focus on maximizing the gifts that God has given to you. So in conclusion, do those three things to the gifts. You have been given the gifts. You have them. You have them. They don't have to be like somebody else sees. They have to be just yours. After the first service, a friend was just outside there and I was having a chat with her. And she said, you know, you have caused a deliverance in my life on the issue of gifts. And I said, tell me, what do you mean? And she said, there are some gifts I have been sitting on intentionally because I didn't like them. But as you shared, I realized that those are not even mine. I'm supposed to just use them for their work to bless others, whether I like the gift or I don't. There could be somebody here who is exactly like that. Maybe some gifts God gave you are quite uncomfortable. Let me tell you one of my gifts to demonstrate what it means when you sometimes have an uncomfortable gift, but for some reason. Let me tell you, I don't struggle, and you must have realized this already. I don't struggle to tell you the truth. I don't. What I struggle to do is to put love around the truth. And that's what I've been trying to learn according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. Because I've come to know that love without truth lies, but truth without love hurts. So let me tell you that gift of speaking the truth has been quite uncomfortable for me in many places. Because sometimes I've stepped on some toes. Sometimes arrows have been shot at me. Sometimes I've been hated. Sometimes people have thought I'm arrogant because of, I told them the truth. A very uncomfortable gift. Yet when I try not to sometimes say the truth and just keep quiet, fire is within my belly and I just can't keep quiet. <laughs> you get my point? I am telling you this as a personal testimony, as a personal story, as a personal experience. But then, and I was sharing this many times with my wife, saying, hey, my wife, what do I do about this thing? Many times I just want to also sound nice, loving, and likable. But then all of a sudden, anointing comes, and I must tell people the truth, and sometimes they don't like me for that. One time she said, my, my husband, just minister to God's people. He will take care of the rest, and that's what I've been doing now. You don't have to like the gift. You only need to use it for God's glory. Let me end this way. The greatest gift that you can ever receive or help somebody else get is the gift of salvation. If you are here and you have never received that gift, the free gift, free not because it had no price, but free because someone else has already paid the price, then I think the things I was sharing here may not be so much helpful to you because that is step two. Step one is get the gift of salvation and then God spiritually imparts into you the gifts. Because now you are no longer just a creature, something that was created. You are no longer a creature of God, just a, a created thing. You are now a child of God when you receive him. John chapter 1, verse 10, 11 and 12, that he came to his people, but his people did not receive him. He came to the world he created, he did not know him. Verse 12, but those who received him and believed in him, he gave them the right, the authority, the privilege, the opportunity, oh my God, to become God's children. So when you receive the gift of salvation, you, 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 you have now finished step one. Now you can step into step two, which is about now happily receiving the gifts of God, developing them by the power of the Holy Spirit and operating powerfully in them. If you have never received the gift of salvation, I want to give you that opportunity now. And I know there are two categories of people here. One could be somebody who has actually never given their lives to Christ. You always come to church. Maybe you were born in a so-called Christian family. So you grew up reciting, you know, these creeds and all these prayers. And you know them. Even the Bible, you know it. I mean, you know it. Even when you come here on Sunday, 
Oh, you sing all the songs, you know them. But you know in your heart of hearts, you have never received Jesus as the Lord of your, of your life, as the Savior of your life. That's category number one. Category number two, there are those who have ever done that. But they know according to the walk they have had with the Lord, some things went wrong. And you also need to restore your relationship with Jesus Christ, to renew it. Those two groups of people, where you are, no song, no closing eyes, make a decision. Raise your hand up and I pray with you. Thank you very much, my sister. Thank you, my brother. Just keep the hand up. Just keep the hands up. And you people up, people this side, everywhere, just raise your hand. Keep the hand up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Raise those hands up. Those two categories of people. One, those who are accepting Jesus for the first time. And two, those who had already done that, but they know their work hasn't been right. They want to renew their covenant. Raise it high. Th thank you very much. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the message you have spoken to us about gifts, about talents, about skills, about your grace, about the ability that you give to each one of us. And you have told us that you have given us these abilities in order to equip the church that we may be able to do the work of the ministry, to go out there and serve in our workplaces, in our families, in our neighborhoods, in church. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for those abilities. But Father, we have also now understood that without the gift of salvation, all these other gifts are likely to be wasted in our lifetime. And so, Father, I thank you for these brothers and sisters who have put up their hands to receive and be renewed in the gift of salvation. Father, I pray that you forgive them. Father, I pray that you cleanse them with the precious blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Fill them with your Holy Spirit today. Equip them to serve you faithfully and productively in their life. May you fill them with new gifts now that they have accepted you. May they flow in their gifts. May they fan the gifts upon them that they are receiving right now. And Lord, to all of us, I pray that you will enable us to discover our gifts, to develop them by the power of the Holy Spirit, and to deploy them for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It looks like you are clapping for us who are sitting. Let's give a big, big hand of praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. And let's appreciate the minister of God's word this morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Samuel Bakutana, for bringing God's word to us. Have you learned something? Have you really, really been blessed? Now turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor two things you have learned and what you're going to do about the lessons. How are you going to apply them? Look your neighbor into the eye. Don't shy away, okay? <laughs> I see. Uh -huh. Now turn to the, uh, my ears, to the other. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. He is here with us indeed. My prayer is that you don't leave the lessons here. Be intentional because God has sent us in this, into this world to make a change. We are supposed to be good stewards of his word and the message we always receive from his presence. So please take it to heart and please put it into practice to the glory of his name. It's time for us to good and our God loves a cheerful giver. Please remember it's more blessed to give than to receive. And as we do, Bethel Judah, they're coming in to lead us in the presence of the Lord. I'll come back with a note says.
Shout again, hallelujah. And give God a mighty hand of praise through your hands. Somebody shout amen. Let us give God for thanks for the gifts we've given. Father, allow us return thanks to you, God, for allowing us to give back as part of our worship to you, God. Thank you, Father, for the blessings that you always shower to us, the gifts that you always give to us. And Lord, may you continue to touch our hearts that we shall be able to give, not only giving in the church, but also using these gifts to bless other people. That the hungry around us, Lord, will get something to eat. That those who see us better than them can be helped by the gifts of our lives and the gifts of possession you've given us. So may you bless these are gifts that we've given to you on your throne. That Lord, they will be used to expand your ministry in this place and across the nations. Bless all your children, even those who have not given anything. They have given the prince of their lives on your altar. Be glorified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can shall we please sit, be seated for a minute? We are coming to a close of our service. It's okay, Bethel Judah, you can be seated for a minute. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Wow, a big, big hand of praise to our God. Indeed, he is so good. We never take that for granted. Praise the Lord. In this service, we normally do the notices after the preaching because we stream from 9 to 10. So we don't want our friends online to miss out on the sermon. And that's why we bring in the notices a little bit late. So please allow me to share with you a few notices. And we are praying, please pray with us because we want to always finish at least 15 or 10 minutes to the close of the hour. So, yes, please clap to the Lord. It's not easy, but it's possible. Hallelujah. So that we allow our friends also to come and we start service on time. Praise the Lord. In a special way, we want to celebrate with those who celebrated their birthdays and anniversaries in the course of the week. You're there, you celebrated your birthday. Just put up your hand so we can show you some love from St. Francis Chapel. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Reverend Musa is very stubborn. You know, he would just come and, you know, that is today. Hey! I think we should sing for him and he dance, he'll dance before here, eh? Not so. But let's also ask all the birthdays, their birthdays. Please stand up, stand up so we can sing for you. Bethel Judah, are you ready? He's ready to dance, by the way. Great. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. But you're not dancing, brother. May the good Lord bless you. There's that song we also want to start. Yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> You've done it, my brother. Great. Isn't it fun to be in the presence of the Lord? Yeah. It is always fun. Life is found in Jesus Christ. So if you have a friend, you left in your hostel, your hall of residence, or back home, please just tell them that they've missed out on the touch from heaven. Praise the Lord. Just allow me also to bring you up to speed to what happened during the course of the week. Update. We, the council members, we had a residential retreat. It was from Friday to Saturday, and it was great. As council members, we met. Great. We also prayed for you. Are there some council members who are with us? I see Engineer Robina, please stand up so people can see their leaders. Are there council members in our midst? If you're there, you're council member. Just stand up. Wow. Thank you. We prayed and we love you so dearly, friends. Keep us in your prayers as we always also pray for you. Something happened on Friday night. Do you know what that was? How many of us attended the physical night of prayer? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, thank you for coming. It was great. I wasn't here. I was in the meeting there, but I was, I was like, I need to be there. I need to be there. I know it was a great thing. Thank you so much. We know that I believe that the future belongs to intercessors. So if you want to be a man or a woman who will take this nation for the Lord and the world, let's learn to pray. Praise the Lord. In a special way, we want to welcome the newly elected guild president, Your Excellence. Excellence, yes, Robert Maseruka. Yes, we prayed for you. I remember you came and spoke here. Just come and wave to your people here, your friends. Just wave. Um, great, just wave. Yes, very smart, great. I'm actually planning to host you at my house when we shift in. I've been talking to the dean, so please start organizing the team. I'll be happy to host you and have a chat with you, the entire cabinet. We'll be happy to have a chat with you. Praise the Lord. Also, the fathers had a great time yesterday. Oh, my goodness. They pulled it off. Father's Union, you rock. Please, engineer, Kapklawako, please come and just give us the next notice. Briefly, what happened, and then the notice about enrollment. Praise the Lord, church. Our dear chaplain, we are so grateful that you could give us this space to convey our heartfelt thanks. Thank you, thank you for embracing our sports day that happened yesterday. And it did, it was a blast. This is a great moment because as I say this, I have my provincial and assistant president of Father's Union. And I'm giving a report. He knew that it was actually happening, but uh, he just never was able to make it. Yes, it was a great moment. And as I promised you, I was for the sack race. And if it had not been, I would have been the best. But also, you should have seen Reverend Professor John Kitayimba Dribbo on the pitch. It was a great moment. Indeed, all the families that appeared there were so much blessed. We needed as a family of St. Francis Chapel and when it next happens, please embrace it. Great things happen on the pitch. We've just had a testimony from our brother who's been preaching here that at 10.30 p.m. in the night, something happened at the pitch. And for sure, many things happened yesterday, which never left us the same, whoever appeared there. In August, there is a health walk. That health walk, we normally go around the whole university, again, the way we were yesterday, praying at different points, doing exercises at different points. We need to be good stewards for our bodies. These bodies have been lent to us by God, and we need to give a good account of them. God bless you as you embrace that one. Oh, sorry, before I forget, before I leave, um, in July, we still have the call come out to you. Fathers who've been officially um, wedded in church and you haven't joined Father's Union, the opportunity is up for you to grab. I'm available, but even when you go to the, to the tents out there, you can be given our contacts. The flyer is underway. Some details are yet to be put in there, but very soon, in not more than two weeks, you'll have it come out to you there and you register. God bless you. Thank you. And all the Fathers Union members say, Amen. Just quickly to remind us do we have holiday makers? Holiday makers, by show of hand, you've been at school and you're back. Wow, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, we still recognize you and you're very special. There will be a holiday makers catch up on 13th May. It's going to be only for 25K. This is the number to call. 0702-1789-54. Mummies, daddies, please encourage our holiday makers to also come and be a part of it. All the vacists, you always have your meetings, your fellowships on Tuesday and Thursday, Thursday at 2 p.m. There will also be a marriage outing on 21st May. 21st May, it's only 70K. 
Where will it be? Bonita Gardens. If you want to be a part of it, please get in touch with the coordinator on this number, 0782-39-9369. There will also be a children's workshop very soon on 20th of May. To all the mothers and all the fathers, please take note of this children's workshop. It will be on that date, 20th May at exactly 9, from 9 to 4 p.m. Please get in touch with this person, 77 60 Once again, we want to thank you so much for being a part of this service. We have come to a close of our service, but we are privileged to have our papa, our bishop, is going to be coming to close us with a prayer and a blessing. Praise the Lord. Just as, as Bishop comes to pray for us, just to remind us that our preacher came with some of his books. Please visit the table out and support him. We need Christian authors. And when you get content from Christians, we really need to read it and advance it as well. Praise the name of the Lord. Bishop, you are welcome. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity you have given to each one of us to come and worship you and listen to you and pray to you and also to praise your name. Thank you for reminding us about the gifts that each one of us has received from you. Lord, we thank you because of those gifts that you have given to us. Lord, we pray that you forgive us for the gifts that you have given to us and you have not been able to use them. Forgive us, Lord. And we pray that from now, Lord, as we have heard, we shall be able to discover, to employ, but also to use the gifts that you have given us. Thank you, Lord. And more especially, about the gift of salvation in your son Jesus Christ. And we pray that our peace, which is greater than we can understand, keep our minds in love and knowledge of you and of your son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, brothers and sisters, Go with you wherever you will be today, now, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now let us go out to love and to serve the Lord by using the gifts that he has given to us. Amen. 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 We shall receive Bethel Judah. They will do only two, I think, two parts of the song they have as recessional, and then we'll be able to go. Praise the Lord. <laughs>